So uh, welcome um, to everyone on the Crowd Academy live uh, call today. As I say, we'll be running through um, Core Web Vitals. I'm Chris Knight, the Web Experience Director here at Crowd, and the other host um, on the call today is Alan Wagner, who's the Web Experience Manager. So just to run through the agenda today, so um, we'll be looking at um, what Core uh, Web Vitals is, um, what it means to you, um, how we should consider the framework in the greater SEO and UX landscape. And we'll run through what are the key metrics um, and what um, good looks like. We'll also have a look at some of the tools that can be used to analyze um, the Core Web Vitals data, including tools that um, will help you profile and debug websites. We'll then take those tools and use that on a, a live example, which will be for the BBC. Um, we'll run through a, a recap of everything and then Adam will be able to take you through some of the types of things that you can start to consider now. Those will be made up of some of the common things that we, we see when we do audits um, and we'll look at some of those quick wins. And then, as I say, we can have a QA and a session at the end and um, by all means, feel free to drop any questions uh, in the Q&A chat below. So introducing Core Web Vitals, um, I think I wanted to start off with stats. I think it's always, always good to look at those and this taken from Google. And on average, a one second delay in load time can impact conversion rate by up to 20%. And I think it's good just to pause and think about that for a moment because that's, that's quite significant. Um, and I'd also say that really would tie into the saying that every second counts. So, when you compare a site that loads in five seconds as opposed to 19, we can see some quite large impactful metrics such as 70% longer average session lengths, 35% lower bounce rates, and 25% higher ad viewability than the slower counterparts. And of course, that would apply across all channels. It's not just SEO, it's, it's PPC. Um, so I think it's, it's important to think about culture really how how do we define core web vitals and what does it mean and I think ultimately um, we need to think about how we have joined up thinking when it comes to things like page speed and um, user experience and it's defining what that common objective and goal is and therefore it's important to point out that core web vitals is a framework um, that in my opinion should be adopted as part of a, a wider integrated philosophy. And I think that over the years with all of the different types of, of um, rollouts we've seen in, in algorithms and things like that, I think it's always been heavily focused about, you know, providing the best web experience that you possibly can. And I think that's where you have to think holistically, that's both developers and marketing teams, because in order to develop the best user experience, it is thinking about relevancy, it is thinking about page speed, and it is thinking about the architecture um, that, that makes up your website. So, for example, you know, websites are developed ultimately to provide a, you know, a function to the end user, but, you know, more and more we're looking at chasing that conversion rate, we're looking to harvest data, um, provide more intelligence on websites. Um, ultimately, that comes with more plugins, more scripts. And so, therefore, it's really important to understand that, you know, what you provide to the user is especially important because, you know, the complexity that you add to websites can ultimately impact on the speed. And ultimately, that, that is all around web experience. Um, one of the questions I get asked quite often is core web vitals all about page speed and often you hear well it's a core web vitals audit or is it a page speed audit. I think the mindset has to be slightly different to that. In fact the the update is really around user experience so it's search signals for page experience and so no the question about it all being about page speed that that's not true and i think that's why we need to think more holistically as i mentioned before and so the extension to web vitals known as the core web vitals is made up of three metrics so loading which is based around the largest contentful paint the largest contentful paint is often the largest um, could be image or content block that is actually loaded through the viewport. So of course, if it takes a long time to load, 
um, that becomes a bad web experience. Um, interactivity um, is around how quick the website will respond um, to um, uh, user input. So that may be clicking a button or submitting a form. And then there's visual stability. So visual stability is around how stable the website is or the web page is when it actually loads. So for example, if you go to click on a form or a button and the website's still loading and the content's moving around, that's seen as, again, a poor experience for the user. And obviously that, that part is not necessarily related to page speed. So I'll hand over to Adam. Um, he'll be able to take you through what the metrics all mean. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, so there are six key metrics uh, that uh, that we uh, measure uh, when we talk about page speed. The first is the uh, first content for paint, uh, which uh, which is the time that passed until uh, the first uh, visible element uh, appears on the screen. This can be a content part or an image or copy, uh, and this should appear on the screen in less than one second. The speed index uh, is a uh, is a time passed until uh, visually uh, displayed uh, the content is displayed on the screen. This should be under four point three seconds. Uh, the largest content for paint, as Chris mentioned, uh, can be uh, an image, a video, uh, or a copy block. Um, this is the biggest element on the screen uh, that uh, that is visible to the user, and this should appear uh, in less than two and a half seconds. Uh, time to interactive uh, measures the time uh, until the, the page uh, becomes uh, ready uh, to take any user input and uh, give a reliable response to that. This should happen in less than five seconds. The total blocking time uh, is uh, the time between the first contentful paint and between time to interactive metrics. Uh, this measures the long tasks that block in the main thread uh, this is a total number, so every every single long task will adds up, and this should be less than uh, 300 milliseconds. Cumulative layer shift, as uh, Chris mentioned, uh, one of the core web vitals metrics, and uh, this is uh, about how um, how much the layout shifting, uh, which probably annoys the users, and uh, we need to reduce it under 0.1. So the core web vitals, uh, this means three key metrics, largest content for paint, first input delay, and cumulative layout shift. And based on Chrome user experience uh, data, uh, this should be, uh, should be, so 75% of users should be in the good area, which means 75% uh, at least, so uh, them should be passed, the largest content for paint. Under two and a half seconds, the uh, first input delay should be less than 100 milliseconds, and the CLS score should be under 0.1. And uh, if all these users can pass these metrics, uh, the core web vital assessment will be passed uh, for the website. And uh, here, uh, it's very important uh, to highlight the difference between field data and lab data. Uh, Chrome user experience report uh, is based on uh, field data. This is collected from real uh, users, uh, from uh, based on uh, real traffic and real um, connections. Uh, so we will see this real world traffic uh, in Search Console. However, uh, if we want to compare uh, and uh, check any changes on the website, we need to uh, trust lab data and we can compare uh, smaller changes between two stages uh, based on the lab data. And uh, considering how, how, uh, how, how much improvement we can take uh, on a very restricted environment, uh, that will have a great impact uh, on, on field as well. And uh, what are the tools that we can use uh, to measure lab data? Uh, Chris will share it with us. <clears throat> Thanks, Adam. Um, so there's some great tools out there. I think they're improving all of all of the time. Some of them you may be aware of, of some of them you may not. Um, we'll just run through the differences on some of them. So probably the most common go-to tool is the PageSpeed Insights tool. Um, this is where, as Adam just mentioned, you're able to look at the core web vitals assessment scores, looking at both field data and the lab data. And it also gives you um, some of the issues that you need to look at to, to address. 
Um, Google Lighthouse, which feeds Google Page uh, Speed Insights, is an integrated tool within Chrome Developer Tools. Chrome Developer Tools is, is, is really um, sort of an, an extension, really. It allows you to debug and profile websites. It also allows you really to test um, in different environments, um, whether that be from different locations, whether that be different devices, different speeds. Also, as I mentioned, allows you to really profile what's happening with the website. So you can, for instance, look at things where you can analyze how much JavaScript or CSS is being used. Um, you're also able to block scripts as well, so you can do various testing and debugging. So that's, that's really useful. And another tool, which is probably my personal favorite, is webpagetest.org. Um, and what's really great about that tool is that it actually gives you waterfall diagrams and that visually gives you um, insight into what's being loaded, when it's being loaded. So, for instance, if your largest contemptful paint is a hero image on the page, you can actually see what's being loaded before that to analyse potentially what's holding that back. So that's a great tool. And it also has um, videos which you can slow down so that's helpful for when you're looking at CLS changes which can often be very slight so not easy to see um, until you actually slow them down or throttle the network um, and you can also look at it from a film strip perspective so it will highlight again where there's you know at what point down to 0 0.1 of a second of a, a CLS shift or um, where LCP becomes apparent. Um, and so we're going to use these tools to actually now look at um, um, a live example, which is on the BBC Sports section. And so um, on this given example, which, as I mentioned, is on the sports section, we've actually run um, the Google Lighthouse tool. Um, to analyze the lab data, which is specifically for this page, and just have a look at how that page stacks up against the Core Web Vitals metrics. So what's interesting on this page, so we can see that the largest contentful paint is, is the first image that we see there. Um, and as Adam mentioned previously, in order for a page or the site ultimately to pass, it needs to be delivered in under two and a half seconds. So what we can see from this example is that actually it takes over 14 seconds for this image to actually appear. We can also see that the cumulative layout shift is above 0 0.1 as well. And I think it's also worth just calling out that the time to interactive um, is over 15 seconds. So again, that's quite extensive. Now, using um, web page tests, we're able to, to run a video so we can actually see what this looks like visually. So we can see that, you know, it's at least around four seconds before we see any content whatsoever. And then well over sort of 12 seconds before that largest contentful paint appears. So what that suggests to us very early on is there's a lot of, of, of script, JavaScript, CSS being loaded and executed before all that content becomes visible. And then we have to wait, as I mentioned, um, a good few seconds more before we see that, that first image. Um, what I'll do is hand over to Adam, who will run through web page tests now. And so actually based on what we've seen visually, um, this is the waterfall diagram that I mentioned earlier. So Adam will be able to run through actually what's loading um, and how that's been loaded and what it's holding back. Thank you very much, Chris. Yes, uh, as, as Chris mentioned, uh, probably web page test is one of our favorite tools as it's, uh, it's very clever and uh, can uh, highlight uh, issues and can show us how actually uh, the load happens on the page. Uh, probably one of the most outstanding uh, issue on, on this page, uh, as you can see in the middle of, of uh, the waterfall diagram, there are many uh, red uh, stripes. This means uh, the fonts are loading this time. Uh, and we highly recommend to reuse the number of font files are downloading uh, to, the, to the essential ones and load them uh, as soon as possible. Uh, so so we can uh, ensure that uh, the content is displayed uh, with the right font. However, everything else should be loaded later, uh, so it won't hold back uh, the largest content for paint. However, uh, in the beginning, we can see uh, that uh, after the first row, this is the main HTML file, we can see a gap. Uh, this is caused because uh, we need to uh, wait for the connection, because uh, the main CSS file 
is uh, served uh, with a CDN server and uh, the connection uh, takes time to be established. So uh, this gap is something that we need to reduce if, if it's possible. Uh, probably we can uh, um, serve uh, the essential CSS uh, code within the main uh, HTML file, or probably we can serve it uh, on, on the same domain. This can help to reduce the, the gaps. However, it's not only this uh, CSS file uh, or JavaScript on, on the beginning that we can see uh, are loading, but after the font files, we see in the list uh, many other uh, CSS and JavaScript resources uh, loading as well. These all needs to be downloaded before at four seconds uh, the render can start. Uh, we can see another uh, interesting bit. Uh, just before six seconds, uh, JavaScript gets executed. Uh, this JavaScript is sitting in the main HTML file and uh, it takes, uh, uh, takes a few hundred milliseconds uh, to be completed and uh, it's blocking the main thread for this time. And as you can see here, uh, after six seconds, uh, the largest contentful paint element will start to download. However, we have to wait, wait quite a lot uh, before actually uh, the image can download. So this is what you see that uh, the image is not displayed uh, early enough. This is what we want to move as, uh, as early as possible in, in this waterfall diagram. So we can ensure that the largest contentful paint element is displayed as soon as possible, just around uh, the, the render uh, started. Uh, so as, uh, as you can see, 14 seconds, uh, what it takes uh, to load the largest contentful paint element, mainly because the fonts and JavaScript CSS uh, downloads and executions, uh, and we need to uh, reuse it under two and a half seconds to pass core web vitals. Uh, just a few generic recommendations that probably will uh, add up and uh, will resolve this issue on, on this page. Uh, reducing the initial server response time, uh, Remember, every, every little counts. So uh, if we can win a few hundred milliseconds on, uh, on long uh, re server response times, uh, that can uh, make a difference uh, when we're talking about core web vitals and passing the 75% uh, per time. Uh, Preloading and pre-connecting uh, the LCP images. Uh, so pre-connecting uh, to DNS uh, or third-party servers can help uh, to reuse the gaps uh, that I showed uh, on the row two. Uh, and preloading the LCP element uh, will make uh, sure that the image is ready uh, to be displayed when uh, the DOM is uh, rendered. Preloading font files again can help uh, to, the, uh, to the browser uh, to display the content uh, with the right font immediately as soon as possible. Pre-connecting third-party domains again uh, can help uh, to reduce the time we need to wait uh, to establish the connection. Reducing JavaScript and uh, CSS download time or uh, execution time, uh, this mainly uh, could be uh, reduced by reducing the file itself and we must ensure uh, only the most, uh, most relevant and necessary tasks are executed uh, so we don't hold back uh, the, the browser from rendering the page. The other uh, issue uh, we see uh, and related to Core Web Vitals is CLS, uh, and this is related to, uh, to the cookie banner. This cookie banner is displayed for first-time visitors only, uh, however, we don't uh, uh, want to forget about them, and we want to display uh, the site without any layout shift as well. Uh, as you can see, it's quite a high number, it's 0.3, and uh, we want to reduce it uh, under uh, 0.1, if it's possible. Uh, another uh, typical layout shift that we uh, frequently see uh, is uh, missing uh, image uh, attributes, uh, so such as width and height attributes are missing uh, for the images, and the browser can't calculate early enough uh, how much place uh, these images will take on the screen. Uh, so after the first bytes arrive from the images, the browser again will recalculate uh, the layout, and this can cause significant layout shifts as well, and we want to avoid that. And this can be uh, easily fixed by uh, providing the relevant attributes. So how we can uh, address CLS issues on, on this page? Uh, don't forget, we want to uh, reduce it from 0.3 under 0.1, which is quite a big change. However, luckily, it seems we can uh, fix it with, uh, with a few uh, uh, easy uh, solutions. 
don't forget about uh, the first and visitors. So, so it should be reviewed how the cookie banner is added. At the moment, it's, uh, it's shifting down everything. Uh, however, if you uh, apply a different solution and uh, display this uh, cookie banner on a different layer that won't shift down uh, the whole content, uh, this can be uh, resolved easily. Uh, providing uh, image size in the, uh, uh, in, in the attributes can help the browser to calculate the right aspect ratio uh, in time, so it uh, will avoid any uh, further uh, layout shifts on, on the document. And uh, just uh, I, again, I wanted to mention that preloading fonts will have an effect on, on CLS score as well, because if uh, the the system font is very different from the font uh, that the website is using that can cause significant shift as well. And uh, just uh, going into details how we can analyze uh, it further, Chris will show us a few uh, great idea. Thanks Adam. Yes, one of the things that we use quite, quite often to test things are Cloudflare workers where we're able to replicate a site. And then we can actually use the tools then to perform tests on it. So as an example, um, on, on the first uh, screenshot, we can see where there's um, un, unreserved space there. So um, what happens, obviously, is the content is loaded. Um, that's what causes the, the CLS shifts because we haven't actually reserved the correct space for the elements. So obviously, reserving that space means that once we apply that using Cloudflare workers, we can then retest that and run that through um, uh, tools like um, PageSpeed Insight to then actually um, record using the lab data um, what the new CLS score is. And so that enables us to do that without any physical changes to, to the actual website and to test those hypotheses. So um, that's another um, real use of innovation that we use to actually do that, that testing. And then really just to, to recap on what we've been through really, I think the major consideration is really understanding what you load, where you load it, when and how you load it. And I think that's quite evident when we look at the visual videos where we see the amount of time it takes for things to load and then overlay that and depend that with the waterfall diagram, we can actually see where things are being loaded. So, you know, it is really important, as I mentioned right at the start, to to really understand and think about, you know, what needs to be loaded. Is it critical? If not, can it be deferred? You know, and that's why it's also important, really important, to think about what you add to the site, um, because obviously the more widgets we want on there, the more intelligence and data that we want to gather. That all has an impact on page speed. So. You know, it's really, really important to think about, you know, are these additions and widgets and things that you add to the website really going to make a, you know, a commercial difference um, if the, 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 the um, user experience and page speed is, is actually poor. Therefore, that always brings it back to web experience and thinking about the, the users because pop-ups and overbearing interstitials can obviously be, um, you know, frustrating for the user. Um, and also they're the types of things that cause those layout shifts, which obviously then causes a poor user experience and is a negative uh, metric within Core Web Vitals. So I think it's about thinking that really less really is more. Um, you know, we need to think about the device types and connections. And really when you're looking to improve page speed, it's about really working at the lowest common denominator, which is why when we test, we look to emulate on sort of fast 3G mid-range um, devices. Um, and obviously focus on the bigger picture. As we've mentioned, Core Web Vitals is important. It is a framework, but overall it is about that, uh, that, that user experience. And that obviously as you make improvements, it's about staying on top of those so that you actually don't, don't regress um, as you move forwards. Um, I'll do is hand over to Adam. Um, he'll be able to take you through some of the sorts of things that you can start to consider now, um, some potential quick wins. And these are some of the most common things that we actually find when we audit websites. Thank you very much, Chris. Yes, uh, obviously uh, not all the websites are the same uh, and uh, different frameworks uh, require different solutions. However, based on the tests uh, we run, uh, it 
it seems that these are the probably the easiest things uh, that we can recommend. Uh, you can take a look into that and uh, probably it can help uh, to improve your site as well. First is pre-connect. Uh, this can help uh, to pre-connect to CDN or third party uh, providers as soon as possible. So we don't have to wait and cause gaps uh, in the waterfall diagram. Uh, preloading. Uh, this will help uh, the browser uh, to download every essential resources such as font files, images, as soon as possible. So it will be ready uh, by the browser is able to render the page. Lazy loading is a, is a very interesting uh, solution. Uh, this will ensure that uh, nothing uh, is downloaded or displayed uh, um, until it's, it's not visible on the screen. So for example, any images or, uh, or functions uh, can be lazy loaded. Images, for example, in the menu navigation or uh, out from, uh, from the viewport can be lazy loaded and uh, the browser won't download them. This can save a lot on uh, payload and uh, download time as well. Uh, and uh, just another thing uh, that was to consider uh, if every uh, function is essential uh, to be loaded at the first moment of the navigation, such as chat or map applications, probably they can be defer loaded as well. So it won't take time uh, to download uh, if it's not essential to be uh, interactive at the very, very first moment. Image attributes, as mentioned, uh, if you provide the right aspect ratio, uh, the browser will be able to calculate uh, the size that the picture will take on, uh, on the screen, so it will uh, avoid any uh, layout shifts. And uh, moving on uh, with images, uh, we highly recommend uh, to review images and uh, optimize them. This optimization can mean uh, a few things, uh, such as using lossless compression uh, or uh, using a different file format, because uh, many times uh, another uh, different file format can save a lot uh, on the payload and therefore on the download time. Properly sized images, uh, we frequently see that uh, the images uh, are served for desktop, uh, are usually served for mobile devices as well. However, uh, mobile devices have a smaller screen, so they can't display uh, the full size image. Uh, so we highly recommend to serve the right image size to the, uh, to the specific devices. Review tracking and analytical scripts. Uh, this is, uh, this is a, uh, this is an idea uh, that could help uh, to reduce uh, the number of JavaScript uh, you're using. And many times we see that uh, some of the tracking scripts are duplicating each other and some of the analytical scripts are not used on every page. However, the framework needs to download uh, some unused uh, script files uh, for those. We recommend to review them and, uh, and just load everything uh, that you need on the page and don't load anything that you don't need on a specific page. Review the unused code. Uh, well, technically it's the same. Never download anything that is unused uh, because it will just take download time uh, and uh, probably waste uh, money to the user uh, when it takes long time uh, and long uh, down. Uh, so for large, large files, it takes uh, more, uh, more time uh, and, uh, and data to be downloaded. So always keep in mind the users uh, the site needs to be fast uh, and they will uh, stay on the site. And these are the, the main recommendations uh, that, we, uh, that we would consider uh, and usually can help to improve the site. But uh, if you have any questions, uh, we are happy uh, to answer them. I um, hope everybody found that insightful. Um, we, we do have a few questions. Um, I'll, I'll probably take the, the first one, Adam, and then we can divvy some out. Um, first question, can a website pass a core web vitals assessment but still be slow for the user? Um, that's a great question, really. Um, the answer to that is yes. Um, of course, CLS is about visual stability, so it's not necessarily page speed. Of course, largest contentful paint is really how quickly those first elements start to appear. However, we did mention earlier that the time to interactive, especially on the BBC example, um, was, was quite excessive. So any improvements that you make, definitely when working on largest contentful paint, is 
sort of has that concertina effect where it squeezes everything back down. But there can be websites out there, competitive websites that could actually still be even faster. So I think it is important to definitely focus on passing that, that assessment. Um, the way we approach audits, we definitely look at that um, first. And um, naturally, if you can improve JavaScript um, execution times, then um, that, that makes a big impact. Um, but it's about continual refinement, really. So really getting getting that, you know, as, as quick as you can. Um, so thanks for that question. Um, another one, Adam, if you want to take, what are the most common issues you see for a site not passing the core web vitals assessment? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, I believe the, the most common issues are related to uh, lar largest content for paint element. Uh, so it can be loaded too late uh, in the in the, uh, in the loading process, or uh, or CLS issues like uh, shifting uh, shifting content. And uh, these CLS issues many times happening because uh, the, because of the missing uh, image attributes. So this is this is something that we highly recommend. Uh, to, to add <laughs> uh, to each site uh, and each image. Um, another, uh, another solution that, uh, that we see many times that uh, unnecessary images are downloading and uh, with using native lazy loading, it's, it's a very simple, uh, simple solution. So, so it's, uh, it probably won't require uh, that much development time uh, to add it to each, uh, each image tags. Thanks, Adam. Um, another good. Hi. Um, it's a really good question. Um, it's a question that I get asked quite a lot, actually. Um, and I think um, we need to think about will everybody be ready for May? And the, the honest answer for that is probably not. Um, and the other conceivable thing could be that actually for a given search that none of the websites on the first page actually pass core web files. So it's interesting to think, well, what then? Or another question would be, you know, what if your website passes core web vitals um, and another doesn't, but the other site has a, a higher domain authority, you know, where will that attribution of, of strength, if you like, be given? So I think, again, it, it comes back to the fact that it's about that holistic approach. It is about, you know, making every second count because commercially for every second that, as we mentioned, can have a real positive impact on conversion rate. It's about making the website as technically sound as it can be as well. So, you know, making sure that Google is able to crawl it. It doesn't waste crawl budget. Um, you know, you look at the amount of broken pages or redirects that you've got, and you really think about that user experience, you know, making it really slick, technically sound. So again, think about that holistic approach. And, um, you know, if you're not there by May, obviously work towards that um, and, and look at how you can prioritize that. Because even if you don't pass, making that one or two or three seconds difference has a, has a major impact across all of, all of those channels. So, great question. If there's, uh, just wonder if there's any more questions, that's all the questions we've got at the moment. Um, but feel free to get in contact if there's any other questions, obviously, or if you want to discuss um, Core Web Vitals and page speed with us in, in more detail. But um, just like to thank everybody for their attendance today and um, hope you all found it useful. Thanks, everyone.